Right. So here you see a typical substructure, a pile foundation. This pile foundation has been completed. The piling has been done and you see the reinforcement of the pile which is coming up and this reinforcement goes into the pile pile cap. So this reinforcement bars that are there on the pile, which you as a structural engineer would have designed on some of the softwares which I listed before. So after designing, for example, the designer here, if we can see around eight bars of probably 16 dia that are there on this pile and this appears to be a one meter dia pile. We have 16 bars of, uh, we have eight bars of 16 dia, which we had proposed to the contractor. He has constructed that pile. We have four pies. On top of that, there will be a rectangular pile cap. The, the hole that you see, there will be a pile cap which will be constructed. That pile cap will be typically 1.5 meters deep and uh, would probably be of the size of around 4 meters, 4.5 meters by 4.5 meters. So we need to, so you see the, the dimensions of the structure. One point, a raft, it is a raft which is, there is a pile, this pile which is 1 meter by you know, 30 meters that you need to design and then on top of that you have a raft which you call as pile cap which would typically be 4.5 by 4.5 or 5.5 by 5 5, 5 by 5 by 1.5 that is the kind of structure you need to design uh, in your software so just giving you a few dimensional details so here we see uh, we have a bridge and we have the pies going from uh, on the bottom most part and then we have a pile cap, this magenta line that you that you see, initial riverbed level that is being marked. So during the low flood season, the water level has gone down, and that has exposed these piles. Uh, you know we can all we can see these piles, but some of these piles, I mean some part of these piles would be into the water, and then it will go rest on the firm strata below the firm riverbed, and that is where they would, you know, be transferring all that load. So these piles would be designed as, typically designed as columns which are under heavy compression. Then we have a pile cap you see uh, on top of those piles and we have piers and between the pier and the piles we have this rigid structure which we call as pile cap. So we have to design this by you know a rigid structure theory, a certain type model that we follow wherein we try to understand the load flow behavior in terms of tension and compression struts through this pile cap from the pier onto the piles. You know, this, these pile caps, they have to be designed as very rigid bodies so that they can take all of the loads, the rotations, loads and the displacements, deflections of the piers onto the piles safely without without themselves getting, you know, damage in the process. And then on top of that, we see the a typical pier cap on the top of the rectangular piers. We have a pier cap which on which the girders, the eye girders are resting. So as a designer, we need to design, we need to be able to design all of these components, the girders, the, P, the pier caps, the piers, the pile caps, and the piles, and also the bearings, which are not very much visible, but these girders are based on the bearings, which, you know, transfer that load. So this is a, a diagram. Uh, this is a, you know, real life bridge of the diagram that I showed you two slides. So, all right, so here is the pre-cast, pre -cast, pre stress pier cap that I was talking to you about. So you see on the left hand side, there is a pier. On the left hand side, we have a pier on which this pier cap with a hole would be placed. So we have the bars, steel bars, which are there on the, which we are visible on the pier in the shape of a frustum. On that, we place this pier cap and then we do the concreting, stitch concrete, and that makes a connection between the pier and the pier cap. And after that, we do the pre-stressing of this pier. So this is a pre-cast component, meaning that it is factory made with all quality procedures intact and it is pre-stressed, which means that it will be a very slender structure and it will be able to take care of all the loadings that will come on the structure. So we need to be able to understand the design part of it. During designing of this pier cap, we need to also take into account the load that comes during the lifting. So that lifting, this lifting is also one of the stages of construction. So during this lifting, this pier cap will behave as a beam which is supported on these two handles. And once it is placed on this pier, which you see on the left and the middle of the picture, then it, these two sides will start behaving as a cantilever. So loadings will change. The middle part, which is right now in sagging, will then be in hogging. So we have to design the structure, the mid part of this pier cap for hogging as well as sagging movements. So the software, the Midas Civil software, for example, that I told you is able to take care of all these loading aspects. So we see here, a constructed pier and pier cap. On the left side of the picture, you can see 
few peers wherein the peer caps have not yet been placed and on the right side of the picture you see the peer caps which have been placed and the pre stressing has been done so pre stressing cables run in the transverse direction across the traffic on these peer caps and they help enhance the cantilever behavior they help to take the load of this that, that come on this cantilever right? so we have we can see the people working on that so all of these loads the men and machinery loads that come on the structure also needs to be taken into design after this stage the next stage is the launching of the girders once the pier cap is in place it has been pre stressed then we launch the girders the superstructure on these pier caps we place them after the placement of the bearings so we put the bearings and the seismic stoppers on these pier cap seismic stoppers or the are the devices which you see on on any of the pier cap you would see on the left hand side small rectangular steel cages you know on the left and right hand side you would be observing small rectangular steel cages those are typically the seismic restrainers these are the blocks they will be completed and they will work they will work as a safe safety barrier when there is a seismic event the superstructure if it tries to dislodge or fall off from this pier cap they will stop it from falling on to the road below so we need to also take into account the safety of the structure as well as people who are using the road below during the seismic events so that superstructure does not come across you know come fall off from the superstructure so coming to the superstructure you see here we have the pier and the pier cap of course this pier cap is different from the one that i showed you in the last uh, last example but this is again a wider bridge a wide bridge so which which requires a wider pier cap more cantilever arms and these are also pre stressed now on the on the bearings these girders have been placed once these girders are placed these girders are also pre stressed girders they are pre cast pre stressed i girders so we need to if we want to you know do the designing of it we need to understand what are the various loadings that these girders will experience so right from the casting yard wherein they are pre pre cast and pre stressed they are transported onto the trailers to the site location and then they are lifted and placed on the bearings then on top of that there is a deck slab that is casted on top of these girders so they have to take the weight of that green concrete that that cast in situ concrete until it becomes composite with these girders and then it starts behaving as a single structural member and then on top of that deck slab the vehicles which ply so they have to take these girders have to directly take all those loads and we need to see that they, these girders do not bend excessively and do not buckle in the lateral plane all right so as a designer we need to know all these loadings and then we need to understand how much pre stressing or how much reinforcement we need to put into these girders to safely so that they can safely take all those loads so this is the deck slab that i was talking to you about you see a girder four girders four i girders which are placed and on top of that we have a concrete deck which will be placed after the girders are in place on the site on the pier caps this deck slab will be cast in situ all right it could be pre cast it is not that we cannot go ahead with a pre cast deck slab but typically it is cast in situ that means we have we have a fresh freshly made concrete which is poured on the top of these girders and then it takes some time to uh, you know get its strength the typical time is 7 to 7 to 14 days and then after 28 days it get gains its complete its strength so this is a view from the model that has been done in the software and you would see here that a designer needs to model all of this into the software and this is only the graphical view of course there will be a lot of other parameters that would go into it for example the weight of the concrete the day on which the test slab is being casted the weight of the concrete and you know all the other system, uh, structural aspects like type of bearing which are uh, on which these girders are being supported and all those things which we need to model into our structure so it is it is a complex job uh, not very easy but again if uh, you know if we, if we are able to understand and if we are able to you know do do that modeling and be able to design that then there is a lot of job opportunities for metro structural engineers who are working in metro metro structures because technical know how is relatively less and the reason is that metros are relatively new Re by relatively new i mean uh, the highway bridges have been in you know been used in india for many decades now so we have structural engineers who are well versed with the design of highway bridges 
uh, using the IRC code and type of whatever construction techniques they employ there. I'm not saying it's for Metro, is it, enti it is entirely different, but there are various aspects that we need to know. So that technical know-how, new engineers, fresh engineers are less who would be able to you know, uh, design these structures confidently. So there is a lot of scope for you know learning and then practicing in the metro structures. Again, we see here a precast priestess box girder. This is uh, one of the type of superstructures which are used in the metro constructions very widely. So we see here it is a closed section, a rectangular section, and it is pre-stressed. So for wide deck sections, wherein there will be a, a lot of torsion movements coming onto the structure, we use this type of a structure because it effectively takes care of the torsion that is induced into the structure and it can mitigate those torsion effects very effectively without causing any undue you know harm to the structure like undue cracking and all we again this is one of the type of structure which as a designer we need to know how to design and you know how to go about it and here we have a, the same box structure which is being erected so this is segment by segment erection the segments are being erected they are being lifted up they would be match casted they would be i mean matched end to end and then you see the holes here there will be a steel cable which we call as pre-stressing cables which will be you know running from these holes and then it will be stressed and these all these structural uh, segments these segments would be locked together and the superstructure the one that you see on the extreme right of the pick it would look somewhat like this on the extreme right part when once it is uh, you know cast it together and uh, put in place the other option is the open web type of a structure which is a u type of a structure which is a precast pre-tensioned u girder these are very widely used in metro viaducts the main advantage is that they are lightweight they can easily be transported they are slender so they can be transported you know, during the night time when there is less traffic on the roads and erected also. They do not require much time for their erection as well. They come in as a single unit. Typically, we use 25 to 27, 28 meters units because designing a U gutter for more than 28 meters is, uh, is not very, pretty much feasible. Of course, we can go up to 30 meters also. But the typical span range that we use is 25 to 27 meters. For example, in Chennai Metro, 25 meter U girders have been used. In Lucknow Metro and Kanpur Metro, 27 meter U girders are used. Which means that these piers, the two piers that you see, center to center of these piers would be 27 meters apart or 25 meters apart, as the case may be. And these are pre-tension. On the left side of the pig, you see the pre-tension strands. The steel strands that are coming out of this blue color uh, steel frame they are the pre-stressing strands so these pre-stressing strands they are you know put into this concrete and they are stressed on the casting bed in the factory in the casting yard they are stressed and then they are logged in place so when they are stressed there is a tension force which is there on these strands when they are logged in place they try to compress in that process. They transfer a compressive load to the U girder, the concrete U girder. And therefore, this U girder becomes a pre compressed member, a pre tensioned member. That's how we call it. It becomes a pre tensioned member, which is able to take load of the trains. You know, which when, it, when that load comes on that, the, the load is, you know, distributed. So we need to understand all those aspects also as a structural design engineer. What are the how much pre-tensioning we need to put, how many cables, how many strands we need to put so that the structure remains safe as well as economical. And then once we are familiar with the design, we need to be aware, we need to have certain thumb rules, we need to understand what to expect when, when we design. So as an experienced engineer, you also need to know how many strands to expect when you are designing a 27 meter span. So all that technical know-how, very valuable and very useful for engineers who are practicing in this field. So we need to know all of that in order to be a good structural engineer who is practicing in this field. Yeah, next slide, please, Roshan. Again, we have one more option, which is the steel plate girders. So as I said, if we have a sp span of more than 27, 28 meters, and uh, you know, for example, we have a wide road, which is crossing a national highway, which is crossing below this metro viaduct. 
and uh, you know we have a wide roach which we need to span and we cannot put a pier in between then we will go ahead with the longer span in that case we will have to look for alternate structural options so steel plate girders help us go with you know spans more than 30 meters 40 meters 50 meters you know all the there, there's that there's a range that we can design them, them for and then of course if this if you want to design for an even higher range then we have cantilever construction options or steel truss options we have various options that we can go ahead with so this is the kind of variety that you know that an engineer a variety of structural components that an engineer needs to be aware of that he needs to be able to design in order to be you know a successful engineer who is practicing in the metro design field we need to know the design of all of these components the type of superstructures that i showed of course i showed you only a few there are more but just to give you an idea of what all we need to know and how all we need to you know understand what are what are the aspects we need to know okay so uh, we are heading towards the end of this presentation typical job roles for engineers who want to work in the structural design of metro viaducts elevated metros we have entry level roles wherein you enter as a trainee structural engineer typically after completing your bachelor's degree or some there in some colleges uh, they have a six months or about a year's training internship program i also get a request wherein uh, you know people want to do their trainings in the organization my organization my my uh, my team and in others as in other organizations also so that is also one of the options that you can go in as a trainee as an intern and after doing a six months or a, or a year's training, which is also your degree requirement, you can go back to your college, take your degree, and then come back to the organization as a trainee structural engineer. Or as a structural engineer, depending upon your qualifications, if you, if you already have a master's degree, or even if you do not have a master's degree, you can still be you know, employed as a structural engineer, wherein you would be put into the team at the entry level, and you would be guided by senior level professionals who would be senior structural engineers and lead engineers. So, and at at the entry level, you will be mainly uh, responsible for designing of one of these components. For example, initially you might be exposed to the design of foundations. So you might be designing piles and pile cap for for some for a few months before you know graduating ahead to the design of pier and pier caps. Once you are comfortable doing that, you would be exposed or asked to design the superstructures, typical U girders and box girders and so on and so forth. Once you are through with that stage, which would typically uh, you know, need two to three years of your time and hard work to understand all of those design of all of those components, you can graduate to a senior level. So typically uh, engineers with you know, experience of more than five years, they are put into this category of senior structure engineers. So five to nine, 10 years of uh, experience engineers in this field are put into the senior structural engineer level, wherein they are, depending on their capability, they are given the small packages and a team of entry level engineers, trainee engineers, and other structural engineers, and they are responsible for the delivery of that package. For example, you could be responsible for the entire, <clears throat> entire substructure of the, let us say a nine kilometer viaduct. So as a senior engineer, you would be having that responsibility, design the substructure of a one package of a viaduct which your organization is handling. And then there would be another senior structural engineer who would be taking care of the superstructure designs. And then there would be lead engineers, so after 10, 11, 12 years of experience and depending upon your, your ability, your knowledge, you could be given a role of a lead engineer. So a lead engineer has to take care of the full delivery of the package, the Metro Viaduct package. They have to interact with the client. They have to interact with the, uh, with the contractor. They have to understand their needs and requirements, the challenges that they would be facing. They also need to take care, apart from the structural aspects, the commercial aspects of the work, for example, they have to ensure that the work work gets delivered within the available budget that has been given to them by the management and also the cost of the material that you know that needs to be procured on the site from the the drawings that you have given to the contractor is within the limits that was proposed during the tender time so there are many more aspects apart from the structural aspects that a lead engineer has to handle. So this is a definitely a elevation in your role. And at this lead engineer role, you can say that you have a full responsibility of that project of its successful delivery, the structural as well as the commercial aspects of it. And then at the top management level, we have principal structural engineer and the HOD level. Principal and structural engineer or the project manager level, they are the people who 
would be dealing with the commercial and the technical innovation and challenges of the project for example if there is a very there is a very wide bridge that is that they need to span then we need to design what or needs to be done then that principal structural engineer would pitch in he would you know come up with his expert ideas and then they would they basically would add value to that uh, proposal by giving in their ideas based on their own experiences so that principal structural engineer for a structural engineer i would say that is the highest level that you would want to be in an organization of course there is an hod but then in an organization there is only one hod and then there could be a few principal structural engineers who would be separately handling two three or four projects depending on the number of projects that are there so the senior level would be typically 5 to 10 years then lead engineer would be 10 to 15 years of experience and after 15 years of experience 15 to 20 years would be a principal structural engineer and a person who has 20 plus years of uh, hard code structural engineering experience uh, you know would be considered for a hod role so these are the job roles uh, which are there the options that are there so there is a definite career path that a structural engineer in coming into this field has ahead of him and you can always you know try to enhance your skills so that you can elevate from one level to the another as quickly as possible and if you are capable enough if you show that you have the ability then these years of experience i have told you is a typical year of experience but it's not that if you do not have 15 years of experience you cannot lead a project you can be a lead engineer if you are good enough you can lead a project so all right that is i think uh, all from my side what i wanted to talk to you in this session yeah again one one more thing how to get into this domain so that that is a basic that you know you need to know initially you need to have a good knowledge of your structural analysis and concrete design courses you need to know about the basic softwares stat could be one software and then you have various training programs that are being learned uh, you know run uh, by skill link also you can enroll in those programs and the, the relevant programs that you see uh, could help you get uh, you know a direct entry into the organizations and then you can also interact with the industry professionals through you know through linkedin and all those professional networks and internships is a good idea because internships if you have 6 6 months of time if you are into spare 6 months of time you should always approach some organizations for internships because internships is a time wherein the organization does not expect too much from you at the same time you get to learn how to work in the professional environment and how what are the you know what all are the requirements from you so that 6 months or one year of internship is a good exposure to the organization at the same time you are not overburdened with the pressure of delivery and you know you can work freely and try to understand the various aspects of professional engineering uh, those are the few things that you could keep in mind if you want to get into this domain of course expert knowledge structural engineering knowledge is the key criteria that has to be there and if you do not have that then you need to enhance that knowledge through various trainings training programs before you you know enter into this field